Okay, in this session, four papers are present. Uh, authors are present to present their papers. So let us start this session by introduction of this. Chairing this session, myself, Professor Pradeep Kumar Shadhu, currently professor and ex head of the Department of Electrical Engineering of Indian Institute of Technology. Indian School of Mines, Dhanbad, IIT, ISM, Dhanbad. It is under MHRD Government of India directly. It was established in 1926 by British Viceroy Lord Erwin. And after independence of India, it is directly under Ministry of MHRD, Ministry of Human Resource Development and Government of India. So, this is my uh, summarized affiliation. Next, first paper, you first yourself you introduce, yeah. and you have the more or less 20 minutes time. So, okay. you will complete the your session, your deliberation within sure. the 18 minutes and 2 minutes for discussion. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon for everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Lukas Evčík. I'm from uh, University from Czech Republic. I would like to uh, present you um, our, our papers. Uh, um, our university cooperate uh, with uh, uh, university in uh, Vietnam and uh, um, especially colleagues uh, from Vietnam uh, uh, st studying uh, our res research idea of energy harvesting. And this paper is uh, about our gauge performance analysis of uh, of uh, an orthogonal multiplexes with time switching energy harvesting. My presentation will consist from um, uh, four parts. I will start uh, with some introduction. Uh, after I will show you uh, our model, uh, I will show you our uh, results, uh, and uh, I will finish uh, with the conclusion uh, of our paper. Uh, uh, b based on the half, du half duplex uh, cooperate with the uh, NOMA uh, uh, network uh, using decode and forward transmission mode uh, with energy energy harvesting uh, capacity to the improvement of uh, NOMA system. Uh, ana uh, we analyze uh, we analyze energy harvesting. Uh, mm, uh, by uh, time switching architecture to a study of optim optimal transmission uh, time and uh, uh, gauge uh, performance. Uh, the aim of uh, our paper is uh, 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 obtain closed form expression for uh, gauge uh, probability uh, with uh, optimum uh, uh, time switching ratio. Uh, from uh, um, our result, it's uh, it will be seen that. Uh, the placement of uh, the relay plays an important role uh, in the uh, in in the system. Uh, in Figure one, uh, you can see uh, our model. We developed the relaying uh, network uh, uh, model. It consists from a um, base station, uh, which uh, communicate. Uh, uh, with a uh, destination uh, node uh, with the uh, helping of uh, half duplex uh, uh, fi half duplex fixed uh, decode and forward uh, relay. Uh, interesting uh, is that it's uh, directly communication uh, between uh, base station and uh, and the destination uh, destination node. Uh, in our system, we have uh, two time slot uh, in a transmission uh, transmission protocol. Uh, this one is uh, uh, X1, uh, where is information transmission between base station and uh, relay, and between base station and des uh, destination node. And uh, as X2 uh, is information transmission uh, from relay to destination and from base station to destination. Uh, after we mm, obtain a mm, outgauge probability for uh, for uh, X1 and uh, also for X uh, X2, uh, this is only uh, only expression for for uh, this. 
and now I, I will show you uh, I will show you our our results uh, in this figure we can uh, see uh, we can see a comparing of traditional CRN uh, system with uh, our uh, uh, normal systems uh, also also for uh, X1 uh, and uh, for uh, X2 uh, you you can see comparing with uh, theory appro approximation and from the uh, figure it's uh, mm, it's uh, clearly see that uh, uh, theory approximation with uh, our simulation it's uh, really too close uh, our our system with uh, using of noma outperform classical uh, CRN uh, system uh, it's uh, it's thanks uh, also that uh, we can uh, we can uh, combine uh, parameters which uh, is uh, in the classical CRN system and also uh, we uh, mm, we can limit the performance uh, uh, thanks to uh, direct uh, communication from from base station to uh, destination uh, here uh, in this uh, this figure is uh, expression of average performance uh, with the different placement of uh, of a relay uh, you you can see uh, compare of uh, free free situation uh, fr first situation is that uh, uh, relay is close to base station with uh, three to three to seven ratio uh, um, no, second one is uh, that it's uh, in in the middle mm, with one to one ratio and uh, next one it's uh, uh, I, uh, it's far from uh, the base station with uh, 7 to 3 ratio uh, it's based on distance allocation between uh, uh, BS and D the, the best one is when uh, uh, base station it's uh, close to close to the relay uh, and this is uh, the last one figure uh, uh, here is a uh, possible uh, it's a transmit. This is express transmission uh, rate. Uh, we the outgauge uh, probability is a uh, function of uh, transmit uh, CNR uh, uh, and a function TS ratio. In uh, two cases, uh, our 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 system using uh, NOMA, you can see that uh, maybe from uh, zero mm. zero dot seven to one, it's a NOMA system. Uh, it's uh, better as. Uh, as a uh, classical OMA system uh, and uh, finally I mm, only mm, conclusion on mm, our, our our paper uh, I uh, I show you some some benefits of uh, a system NOMA mm, uh, from the simulation for the simulation we used the uh, Monte Carlo and we make simulation in uh, MATLAB unfortunately it's only simulation we uh, it maybe in the future it will be good to mm, make in uh, practice uh, but from the simulation uh, you can see that uh, mm, the noma system is uh, better we mm, based on the expression of outage probability uh, and it was uh, the main aim of our paper thank you very much for your attention in my presentation. Yeah, thank you. Now it is open for the question answers. Question is asked from the audience. No one. So sure. I have a common uh, question and common problem. Uh, in this uh, system, whatever you have designed, that have you thought about the problem of call drop that can you minimize with this that mobile communication every time so we are facing with the call drop yeah yeah we we don't uh, we didn't uh, use this we not consider yeah. this call drop okay. but it's good idea thank you maybe okay. maybe it's very good to add thank you. this So now second paper, modeling VM migration in a fog computing environment.
introduce yourself? Well, my name is Pedro Juan Roy, I'm coming from Spain. I'm an assistant professor at University Miguel Hernández, and I'm taking a PhD in another Spanish university called Universidad de las Islas Baleares in Mallorca. And the presentation uh, I'm going to take right now is modeling via migration in a fog computing environment. Well, uh, the objective. We want to create an algebraic model, right, by using a process algebra called ACP, right? We're going to use a factory archi architecture, right? Uh, this factory architecture, there are three hierarchical, hierarchical layers of switches and there are hosts hanging out the lower switch. And what we want to achieve is to uh, is via migration between any two given hosts, right? So let's start from the beginning. Uh, you all know about cloud computing, right? This is the paradigm in Vogue. And uh, cloud computing resources are located in a remote location and they are accessible through uh, data connection, right? And this brings about two main issues. First issue, issues with latency sensitive applications and also issues with low bandwidth devices, right? So in order to cope with that, uh, there's an emerging uh, paradigm called mm -hmm. fog computing, right? For computing, the implementation is similar to cloud, but the resources are not in a remote locations, but uh, uh, the resources are on the edge of the network, right? Mm -hmm. And by being, bringing closer those resources, the advantages, some advantages arise. For example, latency is reduced and bandwidth requirements is reduced uh, as well. So the thing is the problems that cloud computing had for computing tries to solve. Then, uh, for computing is related to Internet of Things, right? Which is composed of sensor networks, ma mainly sensor networks with constraints ca capabilities, right? And mostly those sensors might be in motion, which makes uh, all the thing more complicated. Regarding for computing topologies, they are composed of interconnected server farms, right? And in those server farms, there are hosts, and those hosts are used to assign virtual machines from these hosts to the different users of uh, for computing. Then, uh, topologies for interconnections, there are many, there are some of them, uh, m some uh, topologies proposed for interconnections. For example, there are, there's one very simple called leaf and spine. Leaf and spine is very simple and it uh, takes just two hops at most between any two hosts. The thing is, that in, as it is so simple, there are some problems in escalation, right? There are, for example, another uh, topology for interconnection called n hypercube, right? n hypercube, and um, it allows for better escalation, but um, it, it needs uh, or it, it has n hops at most between any two hosts. So um, there might be a problem with uh, implementation. So um, let's say uh, the better solution we found is the FAT3. Factory. Factory, um, we have three hops at most between any two hosts and factory offered a trade-off between easy design or easiness of design and scalability. Then, uh, talking about VM migration, and um, if we talk about IoT devices in motion, right, we have to consider two kinds of movements. First movement are users moving around the coverage area, right? And then uh, we have to consider the associated virtual machines trying to follow those users, right? And this implies that the associated virtual machines to a single user should migrate to the closest available host to the user position at any given time, right? And this is possible as long as the system allows it, that being for capacity reasons or for load balancing reasons. Uh, that migration, uh, the, the, the optimal solution would be just to take uh, the uh, live migration in, in, uh, because the key parameters are just uh, optimized, right? Okay, so let's talk about the factory architecture, right? A factory architecture is similar to a set of inverted trees. We can imagine an, an inverted tree, so a set of them would be similar to a, a factory architecture where we have three layers of switches, right? We have a lower layer called edge, we have a middle layer called aggregation, we have a top layer or upper layer called core, right? And there are some hosts uh, hanging out of the uh, lower layer, so the, the edge. And the factory is considered, to, uh, has a key parameter called K. Mm, in fact, factories are mm, uh, mm, called, named as k factory, right? Why? Because K is just an even number 
and it can defines the structure, right? If we have a look at a fat tree uh, architecture like this, right? This is a fat tree with k equal four, right? We can see that there are k pods, right? We have a look, one, two, three, four, right? For example, we have that each pod has k switches. Let's have a look, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. For example, we can see, oops, uh, each switch has k ports. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? Always the same. And for example, each edge switch has k halves host connected, right? So we go to the edge uh, layer and each of them has k halves. Uh, as k is four in this case, we have just two hosts and on each of them, right? In this, uh, in, in, in this uh, picture, we have to see that we have numerated all the devices being hosts or being switches from left to right, starting by zero, one, z two, mm, etc. right? And the over subscription rate is one to one, meaning that all the possible links are present, right? Just in order to avoid, uh, in order to save money or to save resources, is it possible just to not put all the, all the links, but we just put all the links, right? So in a, in a draw like this, we can see that we have total connectivity inside each hot, right? So inside, inside, inside the pod, we can have total connectivity, let's say full mesh between all the switches uh, of the different uh, layers. We have total connectivity among all pods, so we have you can go from one pod to any other pod without any problem. But we have partial connectivity between any pairs of hosts. Why? Because uh, the redundant uh, the redundant paths might be repeated at some stage, right? That's why it's only partial connectivity. Well, number of redundant paths among any two hosts. The the, the, the expression is k halves to the power of number of layers minus two minus one. So let's say um, uh, uh, the case where just we have two hosts hanging out of the same switch layer, switch edge. For example, these two hosts are hanging on the same switch edge, uh, like this. So the, 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 the random paths are just one. If any two hosts share the same pod, right, the random paths are just k halves. And if they do not share a, a, a the same pod, the random paths will be k squared fourths. Well, uh, for the model, we need the, uh, just to define an, uh, an, an, an algebra. Uh, an, for, for the algebraic model, sorry, we need to define a proper algebra to do that. And this algebra is going to be algebra of communicating processes, ACP, right? This is a formal a a language that allows to abstract away from the real nature of objects, in this case, processes. And we're going to put, uh, this algebra allows to put, put uh, the focus only on algebraic properties, right? We're going to use these four main operators, right? We have the sequential operator being just multiplication, right? Meaning we just execute one process and then another process, right? We have the alternate uh, operator um, denoted by the plus sign, meaning we can the option we have the option of just execute one process or another one. We have the concurrent operation just uh, denoted by the two vertical bars, meaning more than one process executed at the same time. And we have the conditional operator, meaning we have a condition. If this condition is met, uh, the code on the left hand side is going to be executed. Otherwise, the code in the right hand side is going to be executed. Then, uh, onto the model, the nomenclature used is h sub x is going to be the host, right? Where h sub a is going to be the source host, h sub b is going to be the destination host, and the host has only one port, which is gonna, we're going to call it zero, port zero, right? On to the lower layer, the lower layer is going to be uh, the edge layer, right? So we, we're going to call e, e sub i the ith edge switch, right? Like this, right? The ith switch will have half of the ports looking downwards and another one looking upwards, right? Ports looking uh, downwards will be, will go from zero to k halves minus one. Ports looking upwards are going to be, uh, are going to go from k halves all the way to k minus one. Similar to the A sub J uh, switch will be the middle uh, layer, right? right? So the J aggregation switch will have the same distribution ports that the lower layer, right? And for the core layer, let's say the A C sub L, the L uh, core switch, all the ports will look downwards and we will go from the port zero to port K minus one. Always the K parameter is present. 
Okay, so we want to, uh, well, in the ACP algebra, we have atomic actions. We have the sent message through port X, meaning S sub X and the message D, and read message through port Y, R sub Y, D. And the thing is, if a message say D is sent from one end of a channel X and is received from at the other end of the same channel, communication with hap will happen, right? So we will have C sub X, D. Otherwise, deadlock will happen, right? Deadlock meaning there's no communication whatsoever. So we're going to model all, uh, all the layers one by one. The host modeling is going to be very easy. Why? Because it only matters what happens in the ho source, host source and destination uh, host, right? The rest of the host, the, the, uh, they, they will get be in deadlock, so we don't care about them, right? So the source host is going to be H sub A equals S sub port zero D, and then come back to the same uh, state again, and B just receive the message. So, in order, uh, if we want to generalize, right, we put all hosts in parallel, just in order to state that ho all hosts are in parallel, we use this sign, right? So, all the hosts in the model, one of them uh, sends, which is the host, uh, the source host, one of them receives, which is the destination host, and this is it. We have the this model, this, this layer is model. Then the next one, the edge model, right. Uh, what happened in the edge model? Well, if, if a message is received from a lower port, right, uh, the, um, that message will be forwarded towards the destination <coughs> if the destination uh, is standing in the same edge switch. Otherwise, we will send from uh, that message from all the ports upwards, right? And if a message is received from an upper port, we will uh, send it all the way to the destination host, right? Generalizing what we will get, here we go, right? All the hosts and from all the lower ports, we receive. If we receive a message from any a lower port, we just check if the destination port is just hanging on the same edge switch, right? And if this is the case, we send it to that port. Otherwise, we send it to all the ports going upwards, right? And if we receive some uh, message from the upper port, we divert it to the port connecting to the destination port, right? This is it. What about the aggregation modeling? It's quite similar, right? The thing is, if a message is received from a lower port, it is forwarded towards the destination edge switch if it's standing in the same port, right? Le have a look that aggregation is the middle, uh, the middle uh, layer. And otherwise, it will be sent upwards to the upper layer, right? And if a message is received from an upper port, it will be forwarded towards the destination, uh, to the edge switch start, uh, hanging on the destination. Generalizing all the aggregation ports in parallel, right? So from all the uh, lower ports, it will receive a message from a lower port, we check if the uh, destination port belongs to the same pod as the source pod, right? In this case, we divert the message to the edge port we, where the destination uh, host is hanging. Otherwise, send the messages to send the message to all the ports upwards. Otherwise, if you receive a message from any of the uh, upper ports, right? So just divert that message to the each uh, switch where the destination port is hanging. What about the core switches? It's very easy because just if you receive a message from any port, you just divert it to the port where the destination uh, host is hanging on, right? And this is it from all the uh, um, core hosts in parallel. So if you receive from any port a message from any port, divert it to the port where the destination host is hanging. So the final model would be would, would be obtained uh, by putting in parallel all the previous models conforming a factory architecture, right? So all the hosts, all the edge switches, all the aggregation switches, all the mm, core switches, right? All in parallel in just uh, in a recursive ma manner, right? And as seen in at every layer, communication only takes place in all redundant paths existing between source and destination. Therefore, by linear superposition, right, we can suppose that the model is behaving according to FAT3 specifications. And finally, conclusions, uh, an algebraic model has been designed layer by layer in order to show the via migration redundant paths among any two given hosts, right? Uh, it meets the FAT3 specifications being just one layer away, two layers away or three layers away, right? 
and it behaves according to the expectations, right? And eventually, with this model, uh, this model may permit to obtain many things. For example, all available redundant paths. Or say, this is how many redundant paths there are between any two hosts. The chain of devices composing each path, right? And even the ports used in any device. And this is it. Uh, thanks for coming. And uh, if you have any questions, so. Now it is all? open for discussion. Anyone are interested? Yes. Yeah. About the um, third from the end is uh, Sorry. Equation. Yeah, this one. This one, yeah. Uh, this is right. Uh, uh, I I see that in there's an, uh, an error printing, you know, because in the <laughs> the idea is that this sign would have two bars, meaning it's not a symmetry, but it's all parallel. I don't know why mm. Mm, I didn't get. Because the sign should be this sign, and this sign should be here. I don't know why. <laughs> it's, uh, over here as well. Over here as well, meaning all of them in parallel, and all of them it should be in parallel. So I'm sorry, uh, my mistake. I thought it would be it was okay, but sure. Many many thanks, sorry, professor, <laughs> for connecting this. Good point. Suggestion. Good point. Good point. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> this is my pleasure. <laughs> that <laughs> from the previous <laughs> correction is coming from last year. This is good. This is good. Uh, <laughs> from last one interest. Yes. Is there any similarity with this uh, the packet switching ne network? That one uh, system is there for the digital communications. The packet switching network. It's similar to packet switching network. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, um, you know, uh, packet switching networks is 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 thought f uh, for let's say long distance communications, right? Yes. The thing is, factory is just thought for data center communications. Okay. So um, let it, it could be applied to de to to data communication, as you said, packet switching communications. But uh, the, the, this is thought only for let's say just uh, small. Local. Yeah, it's, it's sm small uh, venues, no? Where a data, cent data center is just uh, uh, all, the, all, this, all the hosts uh, being a data center are just be being interconnected. It could be possible in a data uh, in, a, in, a, in a packet switching communication. Yes, it would, could be used without any problem. So anyone? Otherwise, mm -hmm. big hands. Thank you very much. Have a nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Next third paper, outage and beat error probability analysis in energy harvesting wireless cooperative networks. First introduce yourself. Hello everybody. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Wang Xinwei. I'm from Vietnam and college uh, Visby Secretary Public. Yes. Uh, today I'm here to present to you about tourist outage and this error probability analysis in energy harvesting wireless coverage networks. Um, my presentation is divided into four parts introduction, system model, numerical, and Collusion. Next, the introduction. Uh, this table focus uh, on the wireless power coverage uh, communication network, which uh, include uh, three uh, device: uh, address access points, a source, and destination. We consider the source and rely depends on energy harvesting, which have us then coverage protocol. Um, we obtain uh, the approximate glow from uh, appraisal for the outage probability uh, and uh, average miss error probability. With the simulation result, we consider um, MATLAB's application with uh, Monte Carlo simulation for the uh, performance. Yes, this is a system model. Uh, as you can see, the picture the, the picture so three nuts. Uh, nuts A the the same source, not be the same 
uh, destination quit the relay the first time was not a uh, send the information to destination and relay uh, the second time was the relay send information not b why uh, download links not b energy have a thing clean not a and not a yet it is a reciprocal in the first time loss energy transfer not a and not a uh, with the alpha t energy have a thing well one the minus alpha for the information uh, one of the alpha t and the hat for information transmission r to b and r a to r uh, the remaining one of the alpha t and the hat for the information r to b yes this is the hybrid transmission copyright protocol the performance analysis we consider two parts the outage probability is equal to the outage probability and this one the bit error probability uh, follow the outage probability yes here for the number record research we use the parameters uh, with d a to b distance between a and b uh, i assume uh, one because uh, we use the parameter from uh, the popular um, architectural publication uh, in Wallet Communication Network and detection R A to R zero point one um, detection B to R uh, equal detection A to B minus A to R the bar loss uh, three the target case one uh, and energy efficiency uh, 15 persons and time loss which in uh, one per half from the four um, over the simulation um, with the relay distribution random variable uh, 10 power 6 times yes this is a um, feature so the outage probability versus the transmission signal to noise yes as you can see uh, the outage probability performance uh, with G with G uh, distance between uh, R to B uh, 0 by uh, 3, 0 by 5 and 0 by 7 as you can see, uh, the source detains us to R. There is uh, energy harvesting uh, relay uh, at the relay. Um, this uh, wrap uh, is the better. And next slide. The Jamison ray uh, visits the time of switching ratio alpha. Uh, as you can see, we consider two uh, case, two case um, with the uh, the Jamison ray uh, 5 dB and the Jamison ray 10 dB. Mm. As you can see here, uh, with the uh, the type of chain ratio uh, mm. optimal uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, uh, and uh, the RAX uh, in re uh, 0 0.1. In the year of one, the Jamison ray decreases because uh, but the optimal time will change. Yes, uh, next. Let me just show this error ray probability uh, versus the Jamison uh, signal to noise. Different uh, the energy efficiency, different the energy efficiency, uh, ten percent and. 15% Next uh, 
uh, find out it is a collision. We consider the uh, energy have between from the receive radio frequency uh, signal and forward data transmission uh, with the uh, hybrid uh, then uh, copyright protocol. We obtain the low form expression uh, for the outer probability and the bit error probability uh, in the Rayleigh fading channel uh, with the uh, hybrid uh, then copyright protocol uh, using uh, AF uh, relay. Thank you. This is it. Any question, please? Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. So, in the last paper in this session, development of cyber physical security is better based on IEC 81850 architecture. First, introduce yourself. Okay. Okay, hello. My name is Petr Bajek, uh, and I am from uh, Brno uh, University of Technology. Uh, I'm going to talk about security in industrial control systems, uh, which is frequently debated but still highly undermined uh, topic. Uh, I divide my presentation into four parts. Uh, first, I will start with industrial networks that are used to control and collect data from devices. Then I will about, uh, talk about vulner vulnerability, vulnerability analysis, which is defined the most common attack used in industrial uh, industrial networks. Uh, third, I uh, describe a testbed environment that allows these attacks simulate and analyze. And uh, my fourth point will be about testing this uh, testbed environment. Uh, so, uh, nowadays, uh, the industrial control has been taken over by operation technologies. This system refers to computing systems including uh, production line management, mining operation control, oil and gas monitoring, and many others. The major uh, segment of OT is industrial control system, which includes systems for monitoring and controlling uh, industrial processes. Industrial control system can be uh, divided into two main parts. Programmable logistic, uh, logic controllers uh, that are industrial digital computers for control of manufacturing processes and distributed control systems which are responsible for managing uh, devices in industry. Uh, for managing uh, programmable logic controls and distributed uh, control system is supervising control and data acquisition, uh, shortly SCADA. Uh, that is control architecture used computer network data communication, a graphical user interface for high level processing supervising management. SCADA includes many protocols as DNP3, IAC uh, 61850, Thomas Cosam and IAC uh, 60170 and many other protocols. These SCADA protocols are is widely used in critical if, uh, industry as uh, hydro power plants, nuclear power plants, water treatment uh, and others. These highly in in uh, interconnected systems are called critical, inf uh, critical infra infrastructure because they have a significant impact uh, on national assets, basically we need our public health. Outage of this uh, critical infrastructure uh, would have a significant impact on security, public on nas or and national assets. Uh, despite danger in critical infra infrastructure, many systems are still not su sufficiently secured. Only in 2017, uh, Kaspersky lab uh, described 322 vulnerabilities where uh, 133 are classified as high risk, uh, 127 as medium risk and only one as low risk. 
uh, Kaspersky lab also identified affected areas uh, from uh, CI. The top of four is here, energy, critical manufacturing, water industry or transportation. Another problem in uh, this system that it is not possible to use, use a real en uh, environment for experiment and test because uh, functionality of this system uh, itself could be compromised. This problem is for uh, all SCADA protocols, which leads uh, to small data set that could be used for communication, analysis or simulation. Based on the knowledge, we analyzed, uh, uh, analyzed known attacks like Stutnex, which is uh, detected uh, in 2010 and targeted you know, pro programmable logic controls or other attacks like Night Dragon, uh, Shamon, Black Energy, uh, which are complex attacks focusing uh, on critical infrastructure. For simulation of these attacks, we prepare a test band environment. And th this environment has implemented SCADA protocol, which simulates most used type of, type of devices. Environment has, built, uh, has also been designed to connect to real devices that can be tested. The complex attacks like Stutnex, uh, Shamu, Nidragon, or Black Energy usually consist of several small attacks uh, targeting a spe specific application on devices. These small attacks can be divided into uh, known attacks and unknown attacks. Known attacks represent this mostly target on protocol weakness. For example, uh, distributed denial of service uh, or, or network mapping belong here. Uh, unknown attacks are mostly targeting on end device and typical representative are zero-day attacks or application or configuration. Each attack also includes description, uh, risks that represent and uh, possible detection method. Uh, as, I, as I said, the second part uh, has created a test band where can be attack simulated. Uh, this test band is, uh, contains three main parts. Red and blue teaming, uh, treat monitoring analysis, and cyber physical test band with IAC 61850 uh, archi architecture. Uh, red and B, uh, blue teaming uh, are connected via active, uh, active interface to achieve a high benefit from red blue team approach. Red team uses a modification version of Kali Linux with uh, vulnerability, 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 vulnerabilities module. Blue team uh, is connected uh, to SCADA HME and try to, uh, try to respond to the attack. The second part, the treat monitoring, uh, which is connect uh, passive interface to not disturb uh, communication itself. Moreover, it contains uh, several advan advanced methods such as behavioral method analysis, tree detection algorithm, on machine learning. Currently, we use a professional software, Mendel, which is powerful tree detection from company Gray Cortex. The last part uh, is test band with remote terminal units and classical computer with SCADA software. As hardware for remote terminal unit, we use Raspberry Pi 3B plus uh, and as software for this RTU, we use uh, Raspberry, Raspberry, uh, Raspbian, uh, which is a modified version of Debian operation system. On this operation system, uh, we implemented a standard IAC 61850. They contain three main protocols. Of, uh, these protocols are manufacturing message protocols, which is uh, uh, used for communication between uh, SCADA HME and concentrator. For transferring this protocol, uh, use TCP IP model, where uh, MMS uh, messages are encapsulated to TCP diagram. Se second protocol is generic objective oriented substation even or shortly use, and then is used between concentrator and outstation. This protocol communicate on link layer and 
uh, for transfer uh, using uh, Ethernet protocol with multicast messages. Uh, the last protocol is sample values, which is used between uh, outstation and concentrator. And then this uh, protocol is a little similar to Goose. Uh, also use Ethernet for uh, network traffic and multicast messages. Uh, for implementation of this protocol, we use uh, library lib IAC 61850 for company MZ authorization. This library provides the implementation of free mention protocol. MS, MMS protocol is based on client service model, which is multiple matches type, where most common are request response message for collecting data or change data on server. The request is used to get or set data object on managed device, on our proposal is request on one da uh, data object in Raspberry Pi. This size of one request was 88 bytes a response on this request was 125 bytes for borrow message was con constant during all communication. Second protocol, Goose, is based on publish subscriber, uh, where publisher sending data and subscriber processes this data. Data was, sen uh, data was sending sent from our remote terminal units, where concentrator sent uh, Goose matches, uh, messes messages with data from MMS request for both outstation. The size of one message was 425 bytes. The both outstation uh, same goose message contains respond on MMS request. A sample level protocols uh, is also based on published subscriber model, but data are sent only from outstation concentrator that collects its data and responds on MMS request. Uh, after implementation of this protocol, the all Raspberry Pi units were tested. During the, during the test, uh, was monitored CPU utilization and transmission, transmission speed on it for card. The test, were the test was dividing into uh, three parts according uh, the protocol used. During the test, uh, the generated traffic only consists of one protocol between station that supported. Each uh, test was generated from 15 minutes and was performed total five times. Uh, table, the table shows the result for all three protocols and station on which protocol was generated. These are the maximum generated traffic values that have been reached. For more, it can be seen that Raspberry uh, Pi is rather limited by network card than CPU. Almost every device has transmission speed higher than 100 megabits per second. Uh, this is more than sufficient to simulate device in SCADA because classic uh, devices in SCADA system usually send maximum 10 bytes, uh, megabytes per second. Testing also proves that even if this testbed has expand with uh, additional device like concentrator, outstation or uh, some rear device, Raspberry Pi will be powerful enough to transmit all traffic. Thank you concludes my presentation and now I'll just summarize my points. So uh, an extensive analysis most common vulnerabilities in IAC protocols was performed together with giving clear hits for mitigation detection. The cyber physical test band architecture has been designed and implemented and this uh, test band has a also being tested for all implemented protocols. Thank you. Any question please from the audience? So uh, only one from my interest side that you have presented in the your presentation that high risk, medium risk and low risk. Yes. In the data transmission and this is a big uh, data size that how can you determine it that how can you differentiate no these three? Uh, you mean yes yes, yes. yes? 
Uh, it's from a Kaspersky lab, this high risk, mm -hmm. medium risk, and low risk. We just take this data. So yeah? the, oh, from there, you have taken this data, but yes. in the real time system, the whenever the attacks are coming, so it is not declaring the attacks are coming. Yes. Uh, so there in the data transfer, how can you detect this data from this? These data are maybe vulnerable, these data. I'm not sure I, I <laughs> uh, you understand okay. you. Okay. <laughs> this is the basics uh, for this data communication that vulnerability, you have to detect first then you can. We detect uh, with uh, Mendel software from Recorders company. It's okay. uh, powerful, uh, they detect based on uh, machine learning and other technology. Okay. The session 9A out of 5, 4 uh, presented their papers, all nicely presented, and the answers are given. So, thank you, all of you, and for this nice presentation. So, I am declaring that session 9A is closed now. Thank you.